Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today we're talking about five more mistakes you need to stop making in World of Warships. These are five mistakes that I see are still pretty common, even at higher tiers. And I know I do have a fairly large audience of newer players watching, so these are things that you can fix right at the beginning of your World of Warships journey. You more experienced players, stick around too. There's probably some things either you've forgotten about and I've slipped by you over the years. There's always things that all of us can do to improve myself included in this game. It's a very large, very convoluted game at times, especially nowadays. So we're going to go over these five mistakes here real quick. Uh, while I got your attention at the, at the beginning, if you wouldn't mind dropping a like, leaving a comment. If you do enjoy the video, just before you click off, make sure you do that. Helps out with the algorithm and all that jazz. So let's go ahead and get on into number five. Stop ignoring your mini-map. The map, which is that thing in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, is one of the most important sources of information for you. So a couple of tips about it. First off, make it big. If you hit the plus button on your numpad, that will increase the size of your minimap. I normally keep mine one tick down from the largest setting. Uh, if you want to crank it all the way up to the top, go ahead for you. Um, I just keep it at the second tick because I do have a fairly large monitor and I'm not sitting too far away from it, so that's perfect for me. And if you hit that little gear icon at the top right hand corner of your minimap it opens up all these cool settings for you if you're a masochist you can turn on minimap rotation uh, you can also adjust things like the opacity of the map because again if you're making it you know almost essentially one quarter the size of your screen you may not want it to be completely opaque and you really don't want that anyway because you still need to be able to see through it because you know there might be a torpedo there a destroyer might pop up that close to you uh, if you think that's a little ridiculous look up a little boat called Paulo Emilio so I generally turn the opacity down down almost all the way um, at, you, you will see the settings that I do have up here on screen at the moment if you want to copy mine also while you've got that little menu up make sure you turn on all your relevant and distant indicators so things like radar hydro AA range these are all very important ranges that you need to know and of course vary from ship to ship now unfortunately this setting is also saved by ship so if you turn radar hydro all that jazz on unfortunately that won't carry over to every other ship so make sure you do this with every ship once you get into battle but yes you need to know your radar range your hydro range your AA range especially if you're a destroyer because lots of times destroyers your detection by air range is much smaller than your AA range so if you see a carrier coming within your AA range you can hurry up and slap P and turn your AA off and keep from getting spotted so it's very important that you know the ranges of hydro, radar, all that jazz. That is so important for you to know. Also, the most important thing about this map is that you look at it constantly. Just glance down every few, few seconds to see what's up, what's going on, check on the flow of the game. If your team is weak on a flank, maybe it's time for you to head over there and help them out. If you see ships flanking your position, it's time to do something about it. Maybe run, maybe stand and fight. But this is a source of information, a constant source of information. You want to make sure you have things turned on like ship names so you know what Dorito is over there on the, on the wide flank. Make sure you have last ship position turned on as well on the minimap so you can see where someone was last spotted. A lot of times, you know, DDs and other ships, they go undetected if they have very good concealment ranges at least you have an idea of where they they're at and constantly constantly just keep glancing down to this mini map guys it will save you a load of hurt and even the game every, every shoot every battle if you are well it won't save you the game every battle it'll help you out quite a bit in short pay attention to your map it can and it will save you next up we have stop going full throttle this one is mostly aimed at battleship players. Just because you can go full blast with your ship, you don't have to. A lot of battleship players get into trouble once they get out of the Super Dreadnought portion of their line, especially the Americans. Trust me, I know I got stuck in the Colorado just like everyone else did, and I got so used to just slamming W and going 20 knots. But once you get to the fast battleships in your line, it's a big temptation to just go full blast and get to where you're going. And don't get me wrong, going full blast will surely get you into a position, but it may not be a position that you want to be in. Most of the time, you'll be the first one spotted, 
and one of the first ones to get sunk if you go full W, because you're in the big damage pinata. And now, you've managed to somehow get within 4 kilometers of the cap in the first 5 minutes of the game. Don't get me wrong, I like pushing, but not that early on. Now, if you're using your, your speed to get into a flank and get some cross shots in, you know, you're hanging in the back, you're not dubbing straight toward the cap, you're in something like a French battleship, like a Bergon, a Republic, an Alsa, something like that, I'm not really talking about you. I'm talking about the guys getting within, again, five kilometers of the cap within the first four minutes. There's a time for pushing, and that early in the game normally isn't it. A good general rule is to rock at around three-quarters speed at the start of the game until you see where your team is going. Then you can make your choice on where you want to go. This also applies to turning out. If a flank isn't going that well and you can tell it's not going to be a push flank, but rather a kiting one. If you guys don't know kiting is when you turn around, get your stern pointer toward the target, and you sell away from the enemy team. You bait them to come after you, that way you can farm them down pretty well. So, unless the enemy team is pushing hard, don't kite at full tilt. That just gives up ground freely. And plus two, you may find yourself in the back of the map, way away from the rest of your team. Because again, like once you get to tier 8+, plus, most of these ships, these battleships, can easily do over 30 knots, which certainly isn't slow. So a general rule for this is that chill around half to one quarter speed. You can play with your throttle a little bit, you know, go a little bit faster, crank it down to one quarter speed. Hell, even throw it in reverse every now and then to throw off the enemy team. That prevents you from giving up so much ground so quickly. And you will be so surprised how long one or two battleships or even just one or two ships in general can hold off six or seven ships because they know that they have to push into you and they don't want to push into you as long as you're in a good advantageous position like that you're angled especially if you're in a good tanky battleship like a grosser curve first a grosser curve first on a kiting flank with either one or two uh ships supporting them is just a humongous headache for the enemy team to try and dislodge. Uh, probably one of the more annoying things next to like a, an angled Kremlin with similar support. So if you do that, you make it a pain for the enemy team to push you can, and you slow them down. It gives your team more time on the other flank to get done what they need to get done. So again, don't just slap W, go straight into the cap and then turn around and run away at full speed too. You're doing no one any favors that way and you're probably going to get sunk pretty quickly. Play with your throttle, angle, be a nice annoying battleship. Alright, number three is stop not pre-positioning your turrets. Another tip mostly aimed at battleships, but there are quite a few cruisers with miserable turret rotation times as well nowadays. So in short, you want your turrets to be facing in the relevant direction as much as possible. Of course, depending upon what battleship you're in, the turret rotation time can be anywhere from the speedy 20-ish seconds of the Roma to the just absolutely glacial turret rotation times of the Yami. So when you're maneuvering and turning and such, let's say you're sailing in one direction, you have your turrets pointed off to your broadside, obviously because you want your guns to be on target. If you're about to turn, go ahead and spin your camera around to face the direction that you want your turrets to be facing, or the opposite side of your ship. In this case, if you're turning around, click down on right mouse, then go ahead and begin your turn. While you're turning and holding down right mouse, you have enabled free cam, which means your turrets will be turning to the last position of your camera. So if you're sailing, let's say, to the um, east, or in whatever example I'm going to show in the back right now, you'll see when I, when I get ready to turn, I go ahead, look at the opposite side of my ship, that gets the turret spinning in that direction, hold down right mouse, you see that little free cam um, indicator coming up, then I spin my camera back around so I can see what's going on, watch the shells coming in at my ship and then by the time my ship is turned around the turret should be nearly done turning to face in the proper direction and that will save you again depending upon what ship you're playing anywhere from a full minute to 30 seconds which doesn't sound like a lot but hey every single salvo you can get on target that's 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 that much more damage you're doing for yourself and for your team now this dub this is doubly important when brawling so if you're coming up for a drive-by, uh, if you don't know, the turrets can be very wonky if you try to make a lot of changes 
in these close in drive drive by situations the camera is a little wonky at close range still so you want to get your turrets basically pointing at where you think the broadside of the enemy ship is going to be when you do the drive by and then stick in third person don't try and do anything from the zoomed in side it's 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 too much of a mess stick in third person blast them in the broadside and then sell on about your way. Again, you'll be surprised how many players don't do this and they lose these drive-bys because of this. This can and will definitely, if especially if the other guy doesn't do it, win the drive-by for you in this situation. And again, this can apply to quite a few cruises as well. Now, a lot of the large cruises that we have nowadays have pretty abysmal turning, uh, tur turning times as well. So guys, just be aware where your guns are pointed at and make sure you get them pointed in the right direction as much as possible. Next up, stop using one ammo type. For some reason, even at tier 10, I still see players only using one ammo type. There are exactly five ships that can do this in game. Those are the Yamato, the Musashi, the Shigashima, Incomparable, Satsuma, and Hanover. Everyone else needs to be selecting the best ammo for their situation. What is the best selection? Well, that depends largely on your ship's characteristics. For example, American Heavy Cruisers have great AP with the Super Heavy AP shell. So anytime they can use it on a broadside or slightly angled target at mid to close range, they should. If they don't have that opportunity and they're firing at targets that are uh, quite a distance away or are steeply angled into them, then they can use their HE to burn the target down with their decent reload times. Battleships in general primarily keep AP loaded due to their large alpha damage. However, if you're in a battleship with a gun smaller than 460mm, 18.1 inches, you are going to need to switch to HE when the target goes bow into you, especially if it's another battleship or something that your guns can't overmatch. What can and can't your guns overmatch? Well, that depends upon their caliber. Uh, there's a handy little chart on the wiki that shows this in a very clear manner. Um, I'll throw it up on screen and I'll link to it in the description down below. So if that's the situation, you need to switch over to HE. I know with battleships, most of us like to just keep AP loaded, but you do need to switch to be doing the maximum amount of damage possible. Throwing a bunch of AP shells into the bow of the enemy ship when you can't overmatch it, or throwing into their superstructure, sure, you'll get some damage to the superstructure for a couple of salvos, but then it's going to become uh, damage saturated, and at that point, you're doing minimal damage. And definitely before that, you should have already swapped over to HE, throw some HE in their face, get the target burning down. Or if the target's a, a destroyer, switching to HE is recommended for battleships, as with the AP shells, they overmatch destroyers and then they do a, a minimal amount of damage in any way thanks to the DD uh, HP versus battleship overpin ratio, which is ugh, in the first place. So definitely you want to switch over to HE, especially if there's more than one DD around you. Especially if there's only DDs left in the game. I, I still see Battleship players that they keep AP loaded even when there's only DDs left in the game. Even if you're in a Yami, Musashi, and comparable, so forth and so on, at that point switching to HE is preferable. So it really comes down to your ship and what its characteristics are. Like Italian battleships, they have SAP, and SAP's great at dealing damage to lightly armored targets like cruisers, battleship superstructures, and things like that. But they still have great AP for broadside, so you don't want to be going up against a battleship in a drive-by then throw a bunch of sap into their broadsides it's all about learning your ship's characteristics and ammunition characteristics and equipment do a little bit of research make sure you have the proper ammunition type loaded and perform a hell of a lot better in game finally we're coming down to number one and that is stop not playing submarines I know, I know, I know, sub bad, sub bad, submarines are terrible. I don't want them in the game, not a lot of many players do, but guess what? They are here, and they're here to stay. We have three submarine lines right now that we know of that are coming out this year. They're not going anywhere. I wish they would, but they're not. It's been essentially two years since they've been unofficially in the game in various stages of testing, and I understand the frustration, but guys, listen. If you never play the class, you won't know how to deal with it. And I said this before in my previous video when we were just talking about cruises, aircraft carriers, and um, battleships and submarines were just still in testing. But look guys, there's a lot of players that don't understand how to deal with subs. 
I see it all the time in higher tier. I'm sure those of you that do play submarines see this as well. They, they complain about things that submarines don't do and characteristics that they don't have because they don't know how they operate. And I get it, it's not fun to be the guy that got singled out by the submarine, but if you want to know how to deal with them, play them. Playing them gives you a whole new level of understanding about their mechanics and what their weaknesses are. If you don't play them, at least look up some guides on how to deal with them. I've done one, several other YouTubers have done uh, their versions of them, uh, even Wood Warships did their own tutorial video on how to deal with submarines find one of those again it doesn't even have to be mine i'm just saying find something to tell you how to deal with them so you understand how to deal with them but i'm also telling you the best way to do it is by playing them and i've gone through this with several classes i was frustrated with torpedo boats with destroyers i thought they were these, these invisible little demons that were invincible all the time and i played them and i understood wait it's not like that they're very fragile and losing even a little bit of health to a destroyer is a huge loss. And they take a lot of skill to play. Aircraft carriers. I was very frustrated, very frustrated with CVs. If you can watch my videos from three years ago, uh, I, I was that guy. Every other video was a video complaining about CVs. But then I played them. And then I understood, oh, wait, there's a lot more to this. You have to dodge the flag. If ships group up in like groups of two or more, unless you're a very good CV player, uh, it, it sucks. And yes, you can run out of planes very easily if you goof up even once and you have to give uh, your, your planes time to line up their ammunition and get a good drop pattern down and islands suck because they throw that that off and hey if you do hit dfaa it may not seem like it's doing a whole lot but trust me it's doing a whole lot unless you're just in a garbage aa boat anyway so again playing the class gives you the understanding the in-depth knowledge of how they work what they're bad at what they're good at and how to deal with them. I know it's not a popular thing to say, but it is the best way to understand how to deal with them. And again, they're not going anywhere. Wargaming has made that very clear. We've got three lines coming out, and I'm sure they're about to start just throwing premium subs at us very soon. On that note, that brings us to the end of this five more mistakes you need to stop making in World of Warships video. If you guys enjoyed it, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. One way to 50,000 subs, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that, hope you all have a wonderful Monday and a wonderful rest of your week, and hope to catch you guys in the next one.